What's up guys? It's Mike with Shallow Reefing coming back at you with another video. And today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and setup of the Seapora Empress cabinet for my new frag tank or frag holding tank. So as you guys know, I'm going to be upgrading my tank and I want to, you know, I have a 10 gallon frag tank. It's good for what it is with the space. However, when I upgrade to a 200 gallon, I want to have at least a 20 gallon frag tank to the side of it because, you know, 10 gallons doesn't really give you much to work with and 20 gallons, well, it's twice as much. And the dimensions are a little bit better and easier to work with. So my plan is to set up this cabinet, get a 20 gallon tank on top of it and use it as a coral holding tank for little frags that I'm going to take from my main display when I transition over to my big 200 gallon. So as you can see, I'm gonna be putting it right here because we have a bonus room and it fits perfectly right in this area. It's kind of turned into the baby room as you know, you could probably have guessed. Got tons of baby stuff. Fridge in the corner, go bear cats, mostly filled with bottles and stuff for the baby. But this is gonna be our new home for this frag tank. Granted, there is a window here it's gonna be in somewhat direct sunlight, but I'll probably just keep this window closed most of the time. And this bookshelf will protect it from this window over here that I have opened. Well, it's closed right now, but it will mostly be open. So let's do an unboxing and setup of this um, aquarium cabinet. Now, Seapora is very similar to Deep Blue. I'm pretty sure once, so Deep Blue, from what I understand, don't quote me, Deep Blue kind of transitioned out or maybe went out of business and Seapora is now the company that's taking over or they kind of just rebranded to Seapora. Anyway, this aquarium stand is very, very heavy. So you can see on the box, it says 20 kilograms. So no joke, it's pretty heavy. It's kind of difficult to bring it up the steps, all awkward like, but I think it's gonna be a very solid stand even though the box, as you can see, was damaged in shipping. The local fish store owner said, you know, he doesn't think it's damaged, but if it is, I'll contact him. So let's get to unboxing this. All right, as you can see, wasn't damaged at all. I looked over each individual piece, everything was good, and it's a very sturdy stand based off of the particle board that's made with. That is very dense. I would say, and I don't have any concerns about it as far as water is concerned. I mean, granted, if you do get water on anything for a long period of time, it is going to swell, but this has a nice protective coating over it and it comes with fairly good directions. I mean, granted, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. What you're gonna need it comes with everything here. Pretty easy. Yep, I don't know about the back panel. There is a hole, I don't know, you can see it right there. There's a hole for the back panel. I'm debating on if I want to run plumbing through the back of the tank and out the back because I would lose a couple inches from the wall or if I want to kind of drill underneath and go up because then if I drill from the bottom of the tank, I'd have to drill through the top um, board and that would, I don't know, I don't think it would take away from the structural integrity of it, but it would definitely save me about four to five inches of space, and then that would give it more of a clean look against the wall. I'll have to think about it, but I'll put it together and show you guys what it's made of. in the time lapse early because it'd be awesome if I could finish this all in one take but I just kind of wanted to go over something so you can kind of see right here where I put that cross section in this is lined up perfectly because that's exactly how it's supposed to be you can't flip it any other way um, just because of how the little um, screws and I guess wooden dowels go in but you can see there's like a gap here and it's causing the piece to not sit completely flush and I don't know why it's like that I mean can't 
do it any other way. Let me, let me figure this out. I don't know. Maybe I put it on wrong? There's no way. Because if you look in here, there's only one way this can go. Only one way. Because the wooden dowel is here, and this little, I don't know what you want to call it, screw piece goes like that. Huh. What the heck? I don't know. I mean, it's pretty much idiot proof, but it's just not lining up correctly. Because this board is too high, I don't know what, what happened. All right. Well, I'm going to try to figure something out and finish up with this time lapse. I mean, it looks good so far, but oh, I'm gonna be so mad if this is just a little bit off. I'm gonna be so mad. Hopefully it's not. All right, let's see. I'm gonna figure this out. Guys, well normally on these type of things, I say use a screwdriver, right? So this piece here is supposed to sit into this hole. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but you're supposed to put your screws in there, but they're not really drilled out. So I've been trying to hand tighten it for a bit and I just realized, yeah, this is not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to go and get a <laughs> drill I don't think I really need a pilot hole for this. There's already kind of one, but yeah, this one did not get drilled all the way. Let's see the other one. Oh yeah, this one didn't get drilled all the way either. So, mm, yeah, I'm gonna have to drill that a little bit. So a little modification. You're gonna need to drill for this, not just a screwdriver. All right, let's go get it. All right, so you can see there's four holes here and only two holes there. Now, this paper clearly shows that there should be four holes. So one, two, three, four versus two. And two, and two. There you are. All right, so I would say I'm giving this build, as far as the quality with precision, about a B minus. Now I ended up, instead of just screwing in directly into the wood I did on the first one, I kind of drilled a little bit of a pilot hole because there was one, but I used my, my smallest drill bit setting and drilled probably about a third of the way through the wood just to make sure it's straight and it looks way better these look way more straight as opposed to this one over here that i just kind of went with it so i would say you need a drill for this unless they you know increase the quality but i mean deep blue their tanks are so good so i figured seaport would have like really good tanks and really good stands just like deep blue you know probably i'd give it a b minus i mean i got the stand for 100 bucks so you know what can you ask for i'll go and do a breakdown at the very end so let's finish this thing I'm over it. <laughs> God. After a closer look, these holes aren't drilled out either. And I just tried to use my drill on it. I'm gonna have to do pilot holes on this. Ah, definitely a B minus build, for sure. All right, finally finished it. And as you can see, my sweaty hands we're on the outside of the doors and it looks like crap. Holy crap, that's terrible. Well, what I wanted to do was I wanted to put it together without the feet on it, see how I liked it without the feet because I knew once I put the feet on it, yeah, I would not be taking it off. So I don't know how I like the look of it. I mean, I guess there's no pressure points across the bottom, but they do have the feet on there so that if there does ever happen to have some water that gets on the floor, um, you won't rust your carpet, which I think I'm gonna slap the feet on and call it a day and <laughs> wipe the door down. But I don't know if that's a good thing that the door is so like easy to, I don't know, have residue on it. Cause you know, my hands, you know, they're not like super sweaty, but they are like normal person hands when you're working. So let's see this. 
Overall, you can kind of tell that one of the doors is slightly higher than the other. And yeah, these are just off a little bit. So there's that. The top is off a little bit. Now this door, I don't know if you can hear it, but it does catch a little bit. This door here definitely catches when you close it. Like you can hear it pop on the bottom. Like that's rubbing at the bottom right there. And I can't pull it any farther away. And this thing, which is supposed to be held up in here, keeps falling out. And if you do, if these do fall out, this whole shelf drops. Yep. I'm gonna have to glue that in. And uh, I don't know, overall, like, I don't know if I need an extra screw in here. I mean, I guess it'd be a good idea. I mean, they gave me the screws for it. And I still have to put these little caps in to make it look better. And then I still have to put, you're supposed to put these in the back to keep it tight, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that or not. Well, when all else fails, Gorilla Glue. Now these little pieces that hold a, the shelf together keep popping out. And the shelf has fallen like three or four times. So I put a dab of Gorilla Glue in them. Man, this shelf is turning to be out, to be not a B minus, but probably a C plus at best. Let's see, now it's time to check the level of this. Let's get my handy level out and see how level it is. All right, front is level. Pretty level. The back is level. Now, I expect the front and the back to be level. I don't know about the sides because we do have that raised section. Mm, damn it. That's exactly what I thought was gonna happen. Let's look at the other side, because the front is raised up. There we go. It's not very good. All right, well, let's see. So we know it, the front is a little bit raised up. I'm going to put the feet on and see if it changes the level. Maybe screw the front ones on a little bit more than the back ones. That way the front ones are a little tighter and kind of give me a more level approach. Putting those feet on made the front even higher. Need to somehow, I'm pushing it, well, so you can't tell. So I need it to be more like that. So I might try to screw the front ones in a little bit more and then yeah, the back ones are about where they're at. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but there are five feet. There's one in the middle front, two on the left, two on the right side. So I don't know why they didn't do six and put one in the middle back. Um, but yeah, that's kind of interesting choice in design. Okay, Seapora Aquarium Stand, the Empress Series, the all black. What do I think about it? Well, you can kind of see that there's fingerprints everywhere just because of how the material is. It does look to be water resistant, not proof, obviously. I don't know how I feel, honestly. You know, it's a hundred bucks. All right, what could you do for a hundred bucks? Can you make an aquarium stand for a hundred bucks? Yes, you can. Will it have a nice finish like this? Minus the fingerprints. I mean, maybe if you're really good and skilled, I personally am not able to make something that looks this nice and I want it to be nicer. Granted, it's made in China. So you kind of get what you pay for. If I were to get an Innovative Marine APS stand and everything, that'd be like almost 300 bucks for this. This is $100, so a third the price. And at a third the price of like an Innovative Marine stand made of metal made in America, this is kind of what you get. The door hinges. Talking about those. 
They don't look to be perfectly aligned. This one's a little bit higher, even though these are almost dead on. You got a separation here and a separation here because this cross section sits up too high, causing it to kind of tilt backwards in the front to be a little bit higher. Now I tried to counteract that by screwing in, oops, there we go, the legs down here tighter so that way they were closer to the base and could even it out. It kind of worked, kind of didn't. The doors, I mean, they don't catch all the time, but they kind of do catch. Let's just be real, they catch. All right, so they do kind of catch a bit here. Now the doors, they don't open up all the way like this. So you can't slide this uh, shelf in and out. You have to kind of push it in, turn it, do one of those little Jimmy jobs. All right, come on, focus back up. Oh man, I just screwed that all up, didn't I? There we go, okay. Now with these little hinges, sorry, it's raining out, so now I lost all my ambient light. It says four of these screws need to come in here. They were only drilled holes for two. For a lot of these, I had to drill extra pilot holes because the, the holes that they had were not sufficient. And they said you didn't need to drill for this and I could not have finished this without a drill. Enough said about that. The shelf fell about three times because those little pieces do not hold very well and I had to put Gorilla Glue in it to make it even. Now there's the back component where you can kind of secure the whole back piece in. I mean, I don't know why you need to do it. I mean, you can, I'm not gonna do it because I'm kind of over the build. Um, but overall, this stand, what do I think about it? It looks nice. It was a pain to put together. The finishes were not quite there. Everything was a little bit off, no matter what I did to fix it. I mean, you get what you pay for at a hundred bucks made in China, but I really like deep blue, man. I have a deep blue tank. I have a deep blue 80 gallon rimless, which is phenomenal, amazing. But this Sephora, or Sephora, I should say, um, stand, which is kind of like the new deep blue, kind of leaves a lot to be desired, you know? I said B minus at first. I think it's about a C, C stand, you know? Like, would you get it? So the real question is, should you buy it? Well, that's more of a personal question. If you want to spend more money on a nicer stand, dude, there are so many nice stands out there, go for it and do it. If you want something a third of the price, this is a third of the price. If you want something probably half this price, two thirds this price, you can totally build an aquarium stand for two thirds this price or half this price. I mean, I did it downstairs on my frag tank and that's when my wife said it looks janky because she doesn't like the two by fours. But if you don't want something that looks, you know, finished, you can go with the two by fours and paint it and everything. Cause I believe that ran me, I don't know, with the paint and everything and factoring the screws and whatnot. And that stand probably cost me ballpark in 50 bucks with the paint and two by fours and everything and screws. This is a hundred bucks. So double the price, but it looks way better. Not happy with all the finishes on it, but it is what it is. So guys, that is my review on the Sephora Empress Black Aquarium Stand. Now, what I'm gonna be doing next, I'm going to put a 20 gallon tank on top and use this as a coral holding tank. What I plan on doing is, um, actually, I should probably figure this out right now. One second. My plan is to mount, I think I had a one by three. Yeah, one by three that went vertical on the back of my one tank and it helped tremendously with supporting the um, light. So what I could do is I could drill into here and I could drill in to here and run it all the way up. Granted, this back piece is not gonna be holding anything. So that would be the only way I could get it to do that. Hmm, I kinda put a damper in my plans. I think I can do that. I'll have to figure it out. But that is what I plan on doing and I will mount it very similar to the way that my frag tank is downstairs where I have it running all the way up over the tank, putting like a little bracket up here, dropping down a light and it'll be hovering over my 20 on tank. Hmm. 
I think that'll work. I hope it will work. It should work, but we will see. So because I'm gonna be doing that on the back compartment, I'm not gonna put any of the screws to hold that back panel on. It's really flimsy. It's not gonna be able to hold anything. And yeah, that's about it. Now with this stand, I was initially thinking about drilling a hole in the side and then running some piping in, drill a hole here and do a, like a Durso type drain for the, um, for the frag tank. I don't know about that now. I'm not sure I'm feeling comfortable with that stand doing that. So what I might have to do is just do what I did on my old tank and just have the overflow come out this way, drop it down. All right guys, that is it for the Sephora 20 gallon aquarium stand. So if you like what you see here and you wanna see more, make sure you come back and see some more of my videos and my dog Brock. Yes, I know, it's storming out, he's by me. I know I love you, I know, you're a good boy. All right guys, so anyway, if you wanna see more reviews, click the review button. I'm gonna have a link to a playlist of all my reviews and hopefully you're gonna see more on the progression of this build. So I will see you guys. Well, I just had finished rendering the video and everything I forgot to mention. Oh yeah, where's the cabinet? Oh, you know, right down there. So you might be wondering why I framed it out of view. Well, the dang thing is 28 inches tall. 28 inches tall. Who the heck is going to put a stinking aquarium on something 28 inches tall? This thing is petite to say the least. And I'm only five foot seven and a five foot seven guy says, a 28 inch aquarium stand height is too small, and the dang thing is too small. I thought it'd at least be 30, especially with the feet on it. Nope, 28 inches. So what I'm gonna have to do is build a platform at the bottom and raise that about six inches because my display tank, when I get it, is going to be 36. So overall, this stand for 20 gallon long is 13 inches wide, 31 inches long and 28 inches tall. Now they neglected to tell you how tall it was. Oh look, you can see my handprint. They neglected to tell you how tall it was. Everywhere I looked, they didn't say, but I saw other stands from Deep Blue back in the day that were 32 inches tall. So I was like, okay, it's 32 inches tall, I'll take it. But 20 inches tall? Come on guys, this is garbage. Do not buy this tank. The Sephora is a cheap imitation of Deep Blue and what Deep Blue was. I would not recommend getting any Sephora products. You know, I'm very, very disappointed with this. Um, I mean, I can't speak on their tanks, but their stands, trash. So I don't know if they just, you know, took over the manufacturing side to cut corners, because this definitely looks like they cut many corners. All in all, don't get this tank. C minus, D plus. Well, not tank, tank aquarium stand. Yeah just just disappointment all around for this for 100 bucks you know you're not expecting great products but you're expecting better than crap products but this is kind of why i've changed my position on buying cheap stuff made in china because i'm just never happy with it man just never so now i'm going to build a platform for it to stand on oops i don't even care at this point more i'm just over this dang product Put a platform, probably like six inches tall. Let it sit on it. And then, I don't know, use that for storage. I don't know what I'm gonna store under there. Fish food for six inches of height. Who knows? All right, I'm over this. Do not buy this product. Seapora is kind of garbage, in my opinion. You can find out for yourself, but I'd recommend you not. See you later. All right, guys, this has been Mike with Shadow Reefing. If you like what you see here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more. Don't forget to comment below and let me know how you like the content. As always, I'll see you next time.